everyone, welcome to Everyday Living with Penny. Today we're going to be making barbecue meatloaf and we're also going to be making a pina colada upside down cake. Uh, to start off, uh, the barbecue meatloaf is one of my recipes and you'll be able to find it on my website, everydaylivingwithpenny.tumblr.com. And you can also find the link to my website on Scott County Telephone Cooperative's website, www.sctc.org. First of all, we're going to start off with three and a half pounds of meat. This makes a really big meatloaf if you're cooking for a big family. Um, we've got a one onion diced, we've got three eggs, and we have some breadcrumbs. You can also use um, Cheerios that you're wanting to get rid of or any type of bread or crackers, just whatever you have laying around the house. Also have a 29 ounce can of tomato sauce, of course your ketchup, and barbecue sauce. Um, you go ahead and put your all your ingredients in the bowl with the with the meat, your eggs, your breadcrumbs, and you just use those. Uh, depends on how wet you want your meatloaf to be. I kind of like it a little juicy, so I don't put as much in there. You can always add it later if you need to. Um, then your tomato juice, tomato sauce, I'm sorry. And wash your hands, always. And then you just mix it together. This recipe is really good and it's really easy to make. It takes about an hour to cook, so it's really not that bad as far as time-wise. And of course you want to spray the bottom of your pans. That way it doesn't stick. Make sure you get it all clean. All mashed up. And you just take it by the handfuls and Stick it in your plates. I'm making a mess. Spread it around. And you can make it in any size dish. Split it up into two like I did, or just make one large casserole dish full. And you can make this as a healthy dinner also by using lean meat and low sodium ketchup and uh, the low sugar with the barbecue sauce. And of course, vegetables aren't going to hurt you, so. All right, after you've got your meatloaf in your pan, and of course you wash your hands again, you don't need any type of raw meat on your hands, you take your brown sugar barbecue or honey barbecue, just whatever you prefer. You just pour it over the top as thick or as light as you want it. Let's see. I'm about to run out of barbecue sauce. Not good. You want to preheat your oven to 450 degrees and you're going to let it bake for about an hour uh, covered with tin foil. After that hour, take your tin foil off and uh, let it bake for another 10 or 15 minutes. That way it'll brown the top. All right, after you put your barbecue sauce on, you're going to want to put just a little bit of ketchup. You don't want a lot unless, of course, you like a lot. Personally, I do not. So I just barely drizzle it over it. And 
Then you cover it with your tin foil. Like I said, you put it in a 450 degree oven. <clears throat> okay. So, and again, uh, you let it bake for an hour, uh, then take your tin foil off and let it bake for another 10 or 15 minutes so it'll get brown on top. Uh, the temple, of course, will keep it from getting too dry and too brown or black in some cases, in my case. <laughs> All right, it's been an hour and 15 minutes. Let's get our meatloaf out. That's slick. Okay, never mind the messy pan. The dirtier it is, the better it tastes. On to the everybody's favorite topic of the evening, dessert. My friend LaCosta Fields found this recipe. Uh, it was submitted on a blog by Sarah W. Karen from Sarah's Cucina Bella is the name of her blog. Uh, it looked really simple and it looks really good, so we're gonna give it a try. Uh, you put some butter in the bottom of your pan and just You want to melt it, that way your, uh, your brown sugar and your coconut will have something to make a little um, topping from. You want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and let this melt. pina colada upside down cake. You will need one vanilla cake mix and you will need some a 20 ounce can of pineapple slices and you will need two tablespoons of the juice to go in your cake mix. Okay I've got my cake mix and I've already got my two tablespoons of pineapple juice in here. Got your three eggs and I've got some coconut milk. Not cream of coconut, but coconut milk. And I have a half a cup of vegetable oil. And the directions on this says to whisk it for two minutes straight at a fast pace. All right, after you have stirred your mixture for two minutes, you need to make sure, of course, you've got all of your lumps out. Let it set for two minutes and give it a quick stir again for a few seconds. And then we'll be ready to put it in our pan. All right, while we're letting our mixture set uh, for, like I told you, two minutes, I went ahead and got the baking dish with the butter melted out of the oven. You want to take your brown sugar, you want about a cup of brown sugar, sprinkle it on the bottom, or you can add more than one cup if you want, just depends on how sweet you want it, how much goo you want on the top. Me personally, I like anything sweet. And After you have got your brown sugar in there, you're going to take your shredded coconut and place it on top of the brown sugar. Just spread it around real good. 
<clears throat> then you'll take your pineapple slices and you need to push them down just to make sure that they don't move around. Get them set. So just place your pineapples however you want them. After you've done that, <clears throat> after you've let your uh, mixture set for two minutes, you're going to whisk it again for a few seconds. You can make sure all of your little clumps of cake mix is mixed up really well. Just pour it over the top. This cake batter smells good enough to eat by itself. Kind of smells like birthday cake batter. Make sure everything is evened out. Way it'll bake evenly. And again, you're going to want your oven preheated to 350 degrees. And this will stay in there for 40 to 45 minutes. Depends on your oven. Everybody's is different. Just keep a watch on it and make sure when it is done that you check it with a either a knife or toothpicks. If it comes out clean, it's done. Okay, we have got our cake. Oh, does that not look delicious? Again, this is a pina colada upside down cake. Egan Construction in Gate City is a fully licensed electrical, industrial, commercial, and residential contractor whose services include maintenance on home or corporate offices, custom designed kitchen renovations, demolitions, insurance restorations due to water dryouts, wind damage, or fire, licensed interior designing and architectural drawings, full excavations. They're licensed in Virginia and Tennessee. That's Egan Construction, 345 Water Street in Gate City. Today on Everyday Living with Penny, in this portion of the segment, we are going to be doing a craft corner. Uh, today I'm going to be making customized light switch covers. Um, the only thing I'm going to be using is Mod Podge your choice of scrapbook paper and your everyday light switch cover that you can get at any hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot. You're going to take your light switch cover, place your scrapbook paper upside down. You want to trace around the light switch cover and the nail holes. Doesn't have to be pretty. Take a pair of scissors and cut it out. For the center, you can use an X Acto knife. You want to lay something down to protect your service, newspaper, 
paper towel, whatever you want to use. Get your bottle of Mod Podge and a foam brush or you can use a paintbrush, whatever you want to use. You just paint the entire surface of the light switch cover. Make sure you lay your paper down on top of it. And just very carefully smooth it all out. You have to let this dry for about 10 or 15 minutes. Then you're going to go back over it again with another layer of Mod Podge. This will seal it and uh, make it stick a little better too. And it will dry clear. Now on this segment of the crafts, I'm going to make some personalized wall plaques. You can either, you can hang them on the wall or you can actually mount them to a piece of wood and make them bookends or anything you really want to. I'm gonna make these for two little boys that are uh, two of my friend's children, Donovan and Kate. And I'm gonna be using scrapbook paper and Mod Podge, and of course you can get these from um, Hobby Lobby or any type of uh, hobby store that you may have around your house. Okay, I'll start with Donovan's first. What you do is you turn your scrapbook paper upside down. And you're gonna trace your letter. Go ahead and trace cadence too while I'm at it. Take your scissors and cut them out these uh, jagged edges, if you get jagged edges, are not going to show. And the D. Lay your paper towel or newspaper down again, because you don't want to get anything on your work surface. Everything's going to fit. And take your Mod Podge. Brush it over the top of the letter. And don't be afraid to get it on you because it will come off with soap and water. Dries like glue, it's clear, so it'll peel off. And what don't peel off, you can wash it off. Take your paper, lay it down. Any pieces sticking up, you want to bend over the edge. And again, you let this dry for 10 or 15 minutes, and then you put your second layer of Mod Podge on, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it right now. And 
And again, this will dry clear, so you don't have to worry about having any white marks or hills or valleys like you'd have if you had if you were using regular Elmer's glue or anything like that. And also texturize Mod Podge by using it very thickly and running a paintbrush over it. it gives it the textured look. Okay, so there's Cadence. And you take your Mod Podge. And your letter that you cut out. And again, let it dry for 10 or 15 minutes, then put your second coat on. And there. One of my favorite home decorations is anything primitive or shabby chic. And I got this idea off of Pinterest and I, I really loved it. You could use, um, in this case, I've used an old window pane, of course, with the glass still in it. Um, I got some scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. Or you can use pictures or anything you want. I mean, just there's no limit to what you can do with these old windows and you can always decorate the outside or you know paint the outside whatever you want to do in this case i'm using this scrapbooking paper and we're going to mod podge it into the back of the glass i've already done a few of the paints so what you do is you flip your glasses over what i did was i took my scrapbooking paper and i laid it down and kind of guesstimated about how big it should be and cut it out. Made sure it would fit, like so. And when you're ready to, when you got your design down and you figured out what you're gonna be doing, take your, your brush and your Mod Podge. You put it on the glass. Remember, it dries clear, so it doesn't matter if you don't if you get it on something other than the glass. A little bit more down here in the bottom. You're gonna take your scrapbooking paper that you've cut out and you're gonna lay it face down into the back of the frame and work it all the way around all the corners. If you have to fold it some, that, that'll be fine too. It's no big deal. You let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes to let it dry. Make sure you work out all the little wrinkles. Go ahead and do this side too.
Okay, again, scrapbook paper face down into the window pane. Spread it out. After you're through, I chose like earthy colors. Some people like bold, some people like different styles of patterns zebra print, leopard print, giraffe, whatever you want, whatever goes with your house. Another project that I have saw in Country Sampler and I really, really love was an old cheese grater, um, a dish towel of your choice and whatever flowers will match your kitchen. The only thing you have to do is flip your grater upside down. You want the front to be this side. You will use this grater side to hang on nails. So you stick your flowers down in it you fluff them and fix them however you want them. And you take your towel of choice and I fold it to the center. You run it through the handle of the degrader. and you have a wall decor ornament. And it will look something like that. Another project that you can do with the, what they call this chip letters. You can find these at any hobby store. I found this is a Hobby Lobby. You can use Mod Podge to attach rhinestones. A lot of little girls I know are going for the blingy look now. Some of the not so young girls are also. And so basically all you can do is uh, get your get your letter of your name or whatever you're wanting to spell out if you want a glam girl or anything you want to spell out. You can get, of course, Mod Podge you can get at Hobby Lobby. It's about $7.99 a um, can like this. And this I got from Hobby Lobby too. It's just a bunch of beads or stones, different colors. Take your Mod Podge. And cover the surface with a little bit. So you don't want it to dry too quick before you can get all your beads and stuff on. And just start placing your jewels on there however you however you want or you can use beads uh, you can use scrapbook paper whatever your choice is and try not to do them upside down And after you get the whole letter, it'll look something like this. You can put as much on it as you want or as little. It's whatever your taste is. <laughs> 